Hi, I'm Jason McAteer and you're watching the Red Men TV. Hello and welcome to the Red Men TV. We have got Martin from Blue Moon Rising TV here. Not gloating. He's been no. you've been really, really nice about it to be honest. I yeah. think Possibly a penalty defeat, and also we we both hate United. Yeah, we, there's that kinship there, isn't he? Definitely, I think uh, we, I probably take the line that, that Vincent Company did. We, we, there was a great camera angle yesterday behind the players as they watched that last penalty, and obviously all the City team went wielding off after Yaya or Caballero, and Company just took a step to the right and walked across to the Liverpool players because you've got Milner, you've got Carlo Torre. Yeah, people you know, would be mates. Danny Sturridge you'll have known yeah. from the club and stuff. So Belgian isn't he? So Mingley yeah, as well. He'd yeah, be yeah. Mates with Origi yeah, yeah. And, and also like I think the football community there's a lot of needle in there from some people, but there's also yeah. he's always struck me as a really nice guy. So yeah. I I saw that because I, I unfortunately didn't go to the game, so I watched it on TV yeah. and heard about that and saw that straight away. And he is, he's a nice, he, he comes across, he's a good captain. Yeah, he's a great and captain. he definitely was the difference between the first game this season at the Etihad yeah. and that cup final game, I thought. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do a start and 11 prediction for Man City. Yeah. So you've put your team, who what you think will play on Wednesday against yeah. Liverpool on the board. Do you want to talk us through? Definitely. Obviously, the big contentious point yesterday was would Willie Caballero play or would Joe Hart play? Pellegrini being a, a man of his word. Um, He'd given him the cups. Yeah, he had. And a lot of City fans, though, that performance against Chelsea where Willie conceded five. I mean, some people have been saying there's a bigger comeback than Lazarus <laughs> yesterday in what he achieved. And, you know, maybe you say it's written in the stars or whatever, but ultimately Joe Hart is the number one keeper yeah. at Man City. So I expect Joe to start. Um, Sanya played the majority of the game yesterday. Zabletta came on. I thought Zabletta did really well, actually, when he came on. He's an impact player. Yeah. He's a player the City fans love. We've got an incredible chant about Zabletta because we love him as one of our own. And when you hear him speak about the club, in a similar way you two alluded to about Vincent Company, I think the decent man's man type of characters yeah. are Vinny and, and Zabletta. Well, Zabletta, for me, was the best right back in the league, clearly two seasons, two seasons ago. ago. Yeah. And he had his injury problems last yeah. year and that's continued into this year. But And I think Sanya's been good this year. Yeah. But if a fully fit Zabaleta... I'm more worried as an opposition Absolutely, fan yeah. than Sanya at right yeah. back. I think we're lucky with Sanya and Zabletta that we've got two full backs, right backs of that quality. And Sanya's stepped up this season, but you know, my heart always says Zabaleta as a right back. So I think he's back getting back to full fitness, and plus I think the fact that he played 30 minutes as opposed to 90 would lead me to think that Zabletta will come He'll in get there. The nod. Yeah, I think so. And also, we haven't won at your place for a long time. And I think if we're going to win, we could, we need leaders on the pitch to do this. And he is definitely one. Um, Centre-half partnership starting to look good. Uh, Vincent Company. I don't know if you could see it from that, the game yesterday, but has very much adapted his game. He's become almost the person who stands back. He doesn't try and get in front of his mark. And that is down to the calf injuries. So he sort of stands off and was policing storage. And Otamendi was trying to get in front all the time. And I think that's his natural game. I think Otamendi's starting to come good. Um, you, can see, you can see the quality there. It goes to ground a little bit too easy for me personally. And in the Premier League game, slightly dangerous. But this is our first, uh, t first choice centre-half partnership. Gail Don't Gleeshe. fancy throwing Di Michaelis in there for no, us. No, thank you. No, no, no. no, no again. No. No, I, again, Martin Di Michaelis, you know, a, a good servant to the club. But ultimately, he's too, his legs have gone at this at this level. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he's very much fourth out of four now. Mangala's coming back, but I, I keep, we need to win this game. We need to field the most solid defence we've got. And I think this this is, uh, bearing in mind that the game was only yesterday. Gael Glishion, uh as left back, I thought he did really well yesterday. He bombs on a lot. Um, he helped Raheem Sterling, who was kind of going through a difficult time yesterday. I thought, you know... Um, Liverpool got at him, um, but Gleeshi kept giving him an outlet and taking some of the heat away from him. So Gale would come in for me. He's a naturally fit guy, so I, th I don't think the, the yeah. fact of 120 minutes will take too much consideration, really. Um, 
So you've gone four, like a four four two, which I was surprised because mm. um, naturally I, I um, you've made the change. You've brought Navas in from the start for yeah. Sterling, which we'll talk about in a second. But I'd have thought it had been more of a three four three three. Yeah, and you and you said off camera that Fernandinho was moved out to that position, and it was only the, for the first time against Kiev. Do yeah. you f see him sticking with that? Do you think that's the best formation that you've got at the moment? Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I'm I'm a believer that. Um, I, I think there's a slight element of unpredictability, in, as you say, with the Navas thing. But what tends to happen here is we are 4-4-2 almost with the ball. But or it's almost 4-4-1-1, really, because I see Silva sort of operating here. But when we haven't got the ball, he tends to, and you could see it yesterday, come into the middle to support because he only really wants to go one way. Yeah. He sort of looks back, and I think the needle from Yaya Torre yesterday, as the longer the game went on, was more with an annoyance of yeah. I'm tired, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm dead on my feet. Um, Fern uh, Fernando is very much a policer of that back four, and it's been noticeable when he's come into the team that we've conceded less, simply for the fact that he doesn't really want to go too far over that halfway line. He'll yeah. do the odd run, but ultimately these two then come almost together, and it's only when you have the ball really that. Fernandinho comes into the middle, but he's got a good engine on him so he can get around from the right into the middle as well. And it's so important because he is a world-class player. He can change games and we've seen him do it. But ultimately, as a defensive, he's become a liability. Yeah. You, you know, although he again, needs, it, it, it reminds me of Steven Gerrard in, our, in the latter seasons for right. Steven Gerrard where he was still the legend that is Yaya Torre, the yeah, legend yeah. that is Steven Gerrard. Yeah. They've still got that capacity to play, to pull a 10 out of 10 match and win a game single-handedly. I remember horribly with a City fan you've got to talk about it, the 13-14 season, the day we got beat by Chelsea, we yeah. were still ahead and you had a game, a tricky game away at Crystal Palace That's right, yeah. that you had to go and win. And Yaya Torre won that match for you. Yeah. There was one point in the second half where he runs and he takes five players out, runs into the box and he lays it off and you just went, oh no, it's not going to go our way yeah. today because big players step up. He, he, with Gerard that season and the latter season, we needed H Henderson and we needed Lucas to do his running for him. Yeah. And it sounds like that's what you've got into the situation. You're still, he's still too good a player to drop. Yeah. You're going to use that asset, but you need Fernando and Fernandinho to do his running for him. Yeah. Because ultimately, he's not going to track back and put that tackle in. He's or he just can't do it. Yeah. I, I think with Yaya, for, for the majority of City fans, they actually see that Yaya's best position would almost be as an impact player 30 minutes from the end but with no Kevin De Bruyne and yeah. we've not got the options to do that and that's not the bleeding arts club at the end of the day we've spent a lot of money we acknowledge that but ultimately when we've got the personnel that we've got at the minute available I would ultimately say that we can't afford David Silva and Yaya to have free roles because yeah. it then becomes chaos. Which it, we saw a little bit at the Etihad. Uh, our, he kind of was given and he got withdrawn relatively yeah. early yeah, into yeah, that yeah. game because we were having so much, much success yeah. at getting that year. And that was where, as Liverpool fans obviously have won, it probably, it's a victory that we look back at as saying when Klopp can get it right. And, yeah. and we hope that we can do that a lot more. Yeah. But we thought, oh, that was when I first noticed, the thought, ah, Possibly the end of, of Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, like, we'll talk about it a lot more, and obviously it's further along the line, but Pep Guardiola coming in mm. has sold Yaya in the past. Do, yeah. you think, do you think he thinks this is his last season? And as a City fan, do you think it's his last season? Well, I, I, I'm one of the believers that will probably only miss what Yaya brings to the club when he's gone. Yeah. Um, you saw it against Kiev. I mean, he missed a chance at 87 minutes when we were winning 2 1, and it was a sitter. And I could feel, you know, I could hear all, all my family sort of in my head, going, what a nightmare, what a waste of time. And then, last kick of the game, 20 yards out, he bends one in the top corner. Yeah. And you just think, that's the world-class aspect. He is the person, like you said before, who takes you from being a good team to a title-winning team. Um, but ultimately, he has to adapt his game. Like I've just spoke about Vincent Company adapting his game to be a sweeper so he can get a run of games because it's in and out season yeah. for company as well but Yaya's adapted his game I genuinely believe when we have a fully fit squad he wouldn't be played anywhere near as much as he's being yeah. played now but 
I have to say yesterday for 120 minutes, he did run, he did keep going because he, he could see there was a trophy on the line yeah. and I think that's in his eyes, the glint of the silverware. Is it the might be draw. quite hard to do it against Stoke in a midweek game yeah. through when when it's just when it's a 38 game season. Absolutely. But I, I get through this, we've won a cup. Uh, that's I'll, I'll thing. jump in the ice bath yeah. afterwards yeah, 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 and, yeah. and I'll, I'll feel the pain yeah. after that. So you've gone for Navas over Sterling. Yeah. Yeah. Is that because you think the crowd's <coughs> going to threaten him? Is that you think I th he's going to be pulled out of the fire? fire yeah, I, I think, to be honest with you, yesterday, Raheem Sterling, he did well for about 30 minutes to me. He, he started, it was 50-50 between him and Klein, and I thought when Klein got the yellow card, I thought, here we go, you know, Sterling's now going to keep running at him. But what actually happened, in fact, was he then missed a sitter, and then I think that the occasion got to him. I was really surprised that he stayed on, and I honestly believe that if you'd have won the cup, I'm not sure he comes back from that. In the player that you he think, could be, I yeah. think that would have damaged his you potential. Think that big really, potential big time, yeah. But by staying on the pitch for the 120 minutes um, and by City winning the cup, he can still stand there and ultimately say, "I came to a club yeah. to win silverware. I've, I've done it. Yeah, I got one over my old club. Yeah, yeah. But we realise. I, I personally realise that when it comes to Liverpool, there's still a few demons to be laid to rest in his head. Yeah, and the fans. You know, rightly so. City, some City fans will say, you know, we, we cheer um, James Milner, we cheer Cal Torre, and the Liverpool fans are shouting at Raheem Sterling. But I ultimately understand it. Sterling was like almost a, uh, an indicator of sort of some aspect of power shift in the Premier League yeah. that City had come to the top table, really, in his transfer. So he'll always carry that on his back, I think. But Raheem Sterling ultimately needs to do something at some point against you. To lay this to, lay, to yeah, rest. To get that to rest. Well, hopefully not on Wednesday. Well, yeah. But, it, but it, it, it's going to happen. If he stick with yeah. you again, I, get, I think um, the, you made two massive signings in the summer, De Bruyne and Sterling, yeah. and De Bruyne definitely settled more Absolutely, than Sterling. Yeah. The jury's still out because I don't know whether Guardiola's going to rate him. I don't yeah. know whether he's going to work, whether he fits into that system. Who knows? I think there might be a few shocks of who leave and who don't, don't who stay. He's that good and he's got the potential to be that good that it will come at some point. He yeah. will score against Liverpool at some point. I'll enjoy it until it happens. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I'll enjoy course, him yeah. having poor games or yeah, yeah. looking out of sorts and us marshalling him well. It could very well happen on Wednesday. I genuinely hope it doesn't. Okay, so up front, yeah, up you've front, got... The same two. Which just terrifies me. Mm. I, and I, they didn't have the best game against us in the cup yeah, final because yeah. it was a Navy cup final. Yeah. But David Silva and Aguero on their day is just... Frightening. You must be just so happy as a as a fan just to know that you go to watch them yeah. every week. I think they are that good that it allows us to build from a defensive platform. It's almost from back to the Mancini days where he ultimately said, "If we don't concede with this well, sort of quality, yeah, we win." We know we're going to get goals. Yeah, definitely. The, the the link here instead of Raheem, I, I think in Kiev, that Raheem. Um, Silva and Aguero really started to link well. They scored a wonder goal really between the passage of play that they scored for the second goal. But I think we need somebody who's relentless running up and down those flanks to, to, to assist Gael Gleeshi. And I think ultimately, again, he's played 120 minutes. Yeah. He played half an hour. I think it brings a lot of logic to bring this into it. But I think with David Silva, he's just coming back into the form. You saw a couple of balls that he played into Aguero yesterday. I thought he was pleased really well by Carlo Torre, and I thought Lucas did a, a really great job. But like I said before, when we're talking about your 11, my, my honest feel is that um, Lucas won't be able to play as well as that. Again, in a similar way to Yaya Torre, there's one glint of the trophy. I felt... Big big occasion, yeah. you're able to summon something a bit more, but yeah. when it gets back to the formality of the league, the normal, yeah. you, it normally resorts back to type. OK, so... Give our fans a little bit of optimism because we've yeah. just basically terrified me <laughs> <laughs> with these incredible attacking yeah. plays. What, where can we get at you? Where, where is your weakness? Yeah, well, I, we've shown this season our defence is definitely our weakness. Um, my honestly belief with company coming back, that solidified it to some extent. I think with the likes of um, Sturridge for you, who's you know he's been well known to score a, a few against us. I think. Again, coming back into the Premier League side, I think a lot of those players, whether it be Aguero, who'd never scored in a cup final, Sturridge again, coming on the big stage of Wembley, I think when you come back to the Premier League, these these two players, Aguero and Sturridge, you blink and you're dead. Yeah. And so I genuinely believe that Sturridge will score um, on Wednesday. It's just a question of whether we're going to score more than on one. You, yeah. I see both teams scoring. I genuinely do. 
Um, I, I think also, I mean, the midfield for me, I, I think technically on paper we're a stronger midfield, but I think you work under Klopp as a better team unit. When the, when the chips are down, like you did yesterday, you were 1-0 behind, and you really, you deserve to get back level for me. We, we didn't go on and yeah, we missed our chances. That, yeah. yeah, so I, I think your team spirit under Klopp is stronger technically than ours, although these three will not allow anything to go down. You see them in the tunnel before they go out, they shout, step up, let's go boys. And I think all these players just are quite quiet and let's pass the ball tippy-tappy. Great holders of possession, yeah. but these two, They're your leaders, they will it? fight through trenches to actually for us, for us to get the three points. So how important is the game on Wednesday for you? Incredibly. I think if we don't win that game, I don't see us having a chance to win the league. Win the league. Wow. So it is a huge, yeah. huge game for yourselves. So there we go. That's Man City start an 11 prediction, yep. what you predict will happen in it. We've done a Liverpool prediction, as always. Yep. We're doing a, we've got an umbu for you, so a build-up for the City game with yourself on it and yep. Paul. And there's a few other things. We've got combined 11s yeah, over yeah. on your channel. So how many of the Liverpool team will actually get into a City combined 11? I think we're probably going to skew it a little bit because Paul, <laughs> Paul yeah. God love him, he's ever an optimist. Yeah. But... Yeah, so obviously tell us what you think. Who do you think City will play? How can Liverpool get at them? How can we piss on their chips mm. after they took our one chance to still it? Well, and, Europa League, yeah. United. And will you ever love Raheem Sterling again? Will we again? ever yeah. forgive Raheem <laughs> yeah. Sterling? It's not going to happen yeah, very soon, is it? Yeah, no, yeah, it's going to be a long time. Possibly the Euros, but our, our, most of our fans don't really like him. It's never going to repair. Yeah. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. But I thought Carlo would have started, if I'm honest, and, and Lucas wouldn't have played there. But having said that, I think Lucas was your man of the match. I think he played, he was class. Yeah, it was again.